You spent over 98% of your budget. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Good luck. Your boy did it. I found a way to integrate my finances into my smart home and create automations around this data. And I'm even able to use AI to supercharge the setup. But the moment I got everything working, this happened. Is it worth it? Is it safe? Should AI get access to bank data? Fam, go get a broom, cause this is gonna get messy. So if you saw my previous videos, chapters one and two, great, right? You're one of the real ones and I appreciate you. If you haven't, I strongly suggest that you go and check those out first. You can find links in the description or up here in the title cards. But just to get everyone up to speed, here's a recap. The first challenge was getting the data. My journey on the struggle bus was real because I would had a hard time getting access to my own data from the bank. Turns out, banks are really cautious with their banking data. I did manage to find a workaround using Plaid, but it was complicated and difficult to get it to work. But most of the other finance apps that I've seen used it to get access to like bank data, so I figured I had to use it too. Another frustrating thing is that while Plaid isn't super expensive, it is pay per use, so the automations would have to be gentle with the API requests. But I didn't notice the real kicker until a viewer pointed this out. Plaid is only available in the US, so I even can't use any specific details from the video. The second challenge was I forgot that LLMs are bad at math. I was relying on LLMs to provide a deterministic output when LLMs don't really do that. Now I could technically go without using AI, but I would have to hard code or personally code all of the business logic that I would need to run this automation app type of thing. It just defeated the purpose of the project. To be honest, I, I knew that LLMs were bad at math, but sometimes I forget myself. And, and additionally, I also figured that it's been about six months or so. So it's like three in tech years. I'm pretty sure they fixed this problem by now. Like it, that's enough time. But everything changed one night while I was reading comments on the previous videos. The thought occurred that I should try researching budget apps that work with Home Assistant. Now, I know that sounds extremely obvious and probably one of the things I should have done first before starting this, but obvious things that I'm supposed to think of first, I don't. But surprise, surprise, right? I did do the research and I did find one app that caught my attention and that was Actual Budget. Now this app lets you create budgets around your actual income, which shows you how much you're actually saving and spending each month. You can also import transactions, categorize your expenses and compare your budget over time. And one of the awesome parts about this app is that you have dashboards and reports that you can use to visualize your spending. Basically, this was hitting all of the check boxes for what a budgeting app should be like. What's cool about the whole charts and reports thing is that it removes one of the criteria that I had earlier where I wanted to create my own charts within Home Assistant. There is a reason you would still want to do that and create it yourself, but I'm going to explain why you would want to do that shortly. First, I want to tell you guys about the single most amazing reason why this app caught my eye. Let me get real close. It's completely local. Yeah. You can download the open source files, spin up your own instance of the app locally, and it is yours. Doesn't go anywhere else. All the data is yours locally. I do have to call out one thing though. While it does mention there that they store changes on their servers, I don't think that's 100% accurate. When you go to the pricing page, it tells you that this is completely 100% open source and it's free. Then when you check their blog, he has this really long and detailed post that describes like what they're doing, why they went uh, open source. I don't think that they're storing anything on their servers anymore. This is completely 100% local. I'm gonna put this link in the description so you guys can check it out. Um, but he goes into length as to why everything is open source and what that actually means. It does have some downsides, but for the most part, 
it is a good thing. If you want to access their data programmatically, they have this annoyingly neat requirement that keeps your data safe. It has no open HTTP API type of thing going on. Like it only can be accessed locally by that machine. To those of you who understood what I just said, you may think, wow, that's kind of inconvenient. And I agree it is. But when has security ever been convenient? Okay, so you might be thinking, so what does this mean for all of the work that I just did, like in all those other videos, like, like, is all of that work wasted? Um, how does this even work? Like, like, what's my setup? Like, what's even my setup look like now? Well, it starts with Max Tang's mini PC. I talked about its specs in the previous chapter, but TLDR, this is way better than using a Raspberry Pi for powering my smart home services like Olama. Check the affiliate link in the description if you want to get it for your own setup. I do get a small kickback from your purchase, which supports this channel, but it's at no extra cost to you guys. The mini PC also has the actual budget app server running. And lastly, it also has like the local API server that I mentioned. It's a simple express server that has a few endpoints for grabbing data. And now my smart home can send network requests to get that budgeting data. Like remember when I, I mentioned that annoyingly neat requirement that keeps your data safe? Yeah, so this is how we make it available for other computers on the network to get that information. But that's that's not all. I also mentioned earlier that there might be one situation where you might want to create your own charts in Home Assistant. You can only access these charts while you are home via a web browser. If you really wanted to access the data from the budgeting app outside your home, you're gonna either need to set up a VPN or you could have Home Assistant use a proxy that you set up earlier. Yeah, remember that, remember? And you can have it ask for the data and generate the charts for you so you can view it on your Home Assistant dashboard. Now, of course, this does assume that you have access to Home Assistant outside your home, but this is that reason why you would want to create your own charts. One other thing to note is that sitting on my NAS drive, I do have a Docker container holding Node-RED, which contains all the logic for my automations. And Node-RED will be the one talking to the mini PC, grabbing all of the transaction data, as well as being connected to Home Assistant. Okay, cool, right? Uh, it does charts and apps, so what? Like, like, none of this means anything if you can't get data into it. So how do I get data into this new system? Now with the actual budget app, you can import data Ungubunga style and manually upload your transaction data into the system like a caveman. Now you can also use CSVs or OFX or QFX files. I don't know what the last two are, but these are like things that your bank should be able to give you. I still think you're a caveman if you do it, but that's that's available to you. If you are a clever fancy pants that type with your pinky extended like it's afternoon tea, then perhaps you have a bank that lets you access data via APIs. In that case, Actual Budget does let you create your own adapters to automatically pull your transaction data from banks. Fortunately for me, I'm neither a caveman nor a fancy pants. I'm lazy. And my bank doesn't let me access data through APIs, so I have to go through a third party like Plaid. But, but, actual budget, the app, right, has an experimental workaround using Simplefin. If you haven't heard of Simplefin, neither did I until, you know, me looking into this. This is a Plaid alternative that lets me automatically and programmatically access my bank data for only $15 per year. One could say, why would you pay for something that you can get for free from your bank? But then I would probably say, me no go unga bunga for data. That will be the last time I do that. So how about a demo? So at first I had the budget spoken out loud. Good night. Let's recap your budget. You have 45.69% of your budget left you re-spending at a rate of $2,964.27 per day. You are spending 615.39% above your daily budget. I made the numbers a bit absurd, but the point is that when numbers are spoken out loud, it's not a great experience because your mind kind of turns off. It's too much. Here's the revised version. Good night. Let's recap your budget. You have 45.69% of your budget left. You are spending above your daily budget. Check your budgeting app for more details. Way less numbers and more concise. 
gets to the point really quick. If you notice, it said to go and check the app, but the actual budget doesn't have an iOS app. You can probably get one for Android because you can build it and sideload it according to their docs. But for iOS, we don't really have one, but this is what we can do. Whether you're on iOS or Android, you can load the application into a web browser and then save it or bookmark it to your homepage as a web app. Now, instead of looking and feeling like a web page, it'll behave more like a native application. Now, again, this only works if you're at home in your network, unless you have like a VPN or some way to tunnel into your house from outside. The other way is to use Home Assistant. And again, this assumes that Home Assistant is accessible on the outside. Because you get to set up what these sensors are, you get to choose what these numbers represent that fits your particular needs. So in this case, this is just giving like how much the budget it is set for the month so if whatever you're allowed to spend this is just how much is left based off of what you have spent um, and you can have a ton more sensors if you want but again using these examples uh, this is the information that's coming in but again just playing around with it and kind of just punching in numbers uh, you can kind of see what you can get out of it so again this just kind of gives an example as to like dashboards that you could create with the data that comes in from this application where I can see the budget remaining as well as the amount being spent per day. It also shows me the burn rate, which is essentially the rate at which we are burning money, which is kind of correlating to a bit of how much we're spending per day. Um, and then of course the daily budget that one may have. So far all of this is done without AI. And the whole point of this journey was to prove that I could use AI in useful and meaningful ways. So far, this hasn't been it. But there is a way that AI is incorporated into this that makes a lot of sense. When you first start the app, this category section just says categorize, like all of it is purple and you have to go one by one and categorize everything yourself. This is typical within every budgeting app. As you can imagine, this list can get really, really, really long. Inside the budgeting section, you can define the different categories that you have, and this is what you can use to categorize expenses that you see on the transaction page. In a typical budgeting app, you would have to do all of this yourself. And then in some cases, they may have a database that they pull from to try to do it for you on your behalf. But now you can do this yourself. You can actually attach a GPT to this app and it will categorize expenses for you on your behalf. But don't worry, you can also use Olama as well. There's this dope project from Sakowick called Actual AI and in it you could actually connect your actual budget app to AI in some capacity. So whether you're using GPT or Llama, you have that choice. You can provide it a base URL and this can point to your local instance. It's a moment like these that I really love open source projects. Something that was difficult and kind of hard to do when kind of spread amongst everyone else, being able to utilize open source budgeting apps, open source plugins that I can use to connect into the apps, it just makes my job so much more easier, but it does come at a risk. He clearly states he's not a Node developer and has very minimal experience with this, so stuff could be wrong. And the same goes for the actual budget app. Remember what I mentioned about Simplefin? The Simplefin connection is labeled as experimental in the actual budget app. So there are some oddities with it, but so far that's, I haven't seen anything that's a deal breaker or so I thought. Look, I had everything working. Uh, I had a glorious open source app that could copy and locally store all of my transaction data from my bank. The AI that I have would categorize my transaction data based on the categories that I provided it. It had a way for me to grab the budget data and summarize it with AI. Everything was perfect until this email arrived the next day. Chat, my heart dropped to my balls when I read that. I can't go out like this. Simplefin was the one thing that made the whole transactions from my bank thing possible. And it was the one thing in my system that could be exploited. Against conventional wisdom, I left everything the way that it was, and please don't judge me. I had faith in my setup. I had followed basically all of the best practices that I know of. Because this was the first time that I set everything up, this was probably part of the course. And I probably fell under that first reason in the email. Chat, I saw Heaven's Gates 
when another email came the next day. <laughs> This was wild, bro, I should give up. But you know, something caught my attention when I read the email the second time. Gentle five minute reminder. Both the emails came in at 5 a.m. Now this kind of made me think of, there's something more at work here. And then looking at it even more closely, I decided to check the IP addresses between both emails and they were different, which kind of gave me the second clue. Like, I don't think I'm that unlucky that an attacker can guess my tokens like literally within hours of me getting it unless like the whole thing was a scam to begin with i don't know but it seemed very unlikely and um, implausible when i checked the mini pc and looked at the ip address in there yeah they matched they matched it seemed like <sighs> if you know you know I, I don't think my heart can take another scare like this. Because I don't use static IP addresses, the IPs will change, and as a result, the system will know, and it lets me know that it knows, which is terrifying. Given everything that I had to do, is it worth it? Is it safe? Should AI get access to bank data? These are all good questions. and. I can answer them, and you may not like some of my answers, but I'm gonna say it anyways. First, everything everywhere is vulnerable, especially when it comes to the internet. I have the majority of my system locked behind my network, yet I hear even a whisper of an attack and I nearly expire. On the other hand, my wife and I had tried so many different budgeting apps, Mint, you need a budget? Yeah, YNAB, Pocket Guard, and, and a bunch of others. Like I always felt weird giving these people access data, access to my bank, but to have it local for a fraction of the cost, bro, $15 per year? versus their however many per month come on come on come on and, and not to mention because it's my data and because it's local and it's within like the whole smart home ecosystem i have the ability to trigger automations with it which is truly powerful like the power is yours and it's in your hands when you go this route. And the WAF score, your WAF score, this app is easy to use, straightforward with no fluff. Your spouse don't need to know how to code or do anything fancy. They just simply need to open up the app, work with it like a regular app, monitor their whole, like their whole spending situation. And I'm not saying this as though it's perfect, like it's not perfect. But when I look at what's out there and what this is and just like bang for buck, this is as good as it gets, at least in my opinion. And maybe because I'm seeing this for the first time, I'm a little bit wowed by it, but wow. Now, okay, so you might be thinking that, oh, I can hear it. Hey, uh, this is suspect. You're too easily wowed, Mike. Like, like, I don't trust AI. AI has no part in finances. Like, what you doing? Like, why? Like, I don't see the whole need to do this. Stop it. Okay, all right, fine, cool. I have two things to point out, two things. If you have a smart home, right, and all of this stuff that you've created is yours and you're that security conscious, this too, right, your smart home, all of the automations and the things that you set up is yours. You get to choose the AI that you use. You get to choose what you send it. I have Olama categorizing our expenses and to have an AI do it for us on our behalf, like that saves so much time, which brings me basically to the second point about choice. I sometimes think we underestimate how vulnerable we are on the internet. We give our implicit trust to these entities, these online entities when we sign up for different accounts and we do all sorts of different things weirdly enough like we feel somewhat comforted they're a data security company they're they're not gonna mess up my data they're a hospital they know what they're doing they'll keep my information safe they're the government they're gonna they know what they're doing all these companies and and entities know what they're doing i know you know they don't so the real question is do you trust yourself over someone else bro i'm done <laughs> Hey! No, I'm not. No, I'm not. If you're looking to create automations like what you saw here, check the link in the description. It will take you to my blog where I have the instructions and references. If you like the videos that you've been seeing, subscribe so you can see what comes next. Bro, I have so many ideas. So many ideas. Subscribe. All right.